Now, a lot of times when it comes to improving flexibility, we often think that the thing that we have to do is relax muscles, not get them contracting better, okay? We think that we need to do the opposite of that and help muscles relax in order to help joints move. But here's the thing that you have to keep in mind. Your muscles are the tissues within your body that are designed, that are specifically designed to move your bones and stop your bones from moving. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Shawbrook. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we are coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And if you are looking for a way to exercise on your own while still receiving guidance, the guidance, the kind of guidance that we give our clients here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, then you need to enroll in our virtual membership program. What this is, is a program where we design exercise for your body. This is not a one-size-fits-all plan. You go through an assessment, you send us the results, and we build exercise for your body for you to do at whatever gym you work out at. So if this sounds of interest to you, go to matschaumburg.com, click on the membership tab, and enroll in the virtual membership program. Now today, we're answering your questions about exercise, and this one was sent in through Facebook Messenger. And this is an awesome question because it pertains to a lot of the content that we put out. The question is asked, how does working muscles increase flexibility? Won't that make you tighter? And often this is a great misconception that's put out there that by doing strength training, by focusing on squeezing your muscles, by doing things to build muscles, that that will actually limit your joint mobility or limit your flexibility when in fact it's quite the opposite. Yeah, and if you've been listening to us for a little while, you've probably picked up that every time we talk about muscles and keeping your muscles healthy, one of the things that always comes up is that not only does it keep your joints healthy, it keeps you mobile, it keeps you strong, it keeps you stable. And another word that a lot of times people like to use to associate this is it keeps you flexible. And it's interesting because whenever we think of the word flexible, the only thing a lot of us think of is stretching and relaxing muscles. It's like, if I want to be flexible, I got to make sure I stretch. And we actually see a lot of different stuff on that, meaning we help people get their muscles stronger and more stable, and that's what allows their body to be more flexible and more mobile. So this is a really important question because it is going against the grain on what is currently out there in the gym world about what creates flexibility. So thanks so much for tuning in because I love that you're going to hear this perspective. It's very different than probably what you've heard before. Now, a lot of times when it comes to improving flexibility, we often think that the thing that we have to do is relax muscles, not get them contracting better, okay? We think that we need to do the opposite of that and help muscles relax in order to help joints move. But here's the thing that you have to keep in mind. Your muscles are the tissues within your body that are designed, that are specifically designed to move your bones and stop your bones from moving, okay? So when your bones move, when your joints move, that is because your muscles are contracting, all right? So if your muscles aren't contracting well, your bones and your joints don't move as well. So, so often we think we need to get muscles to stop contracting as well. We need to get them to relax. We need to get muscles to release in order to be able to become more flexible. And the reality is the thing that muscles are designed to do is move your bones, move your joints. And if your muscles can contract better, your joints and your bones will move better. 
and Charlotte, you brought up two good things I want to touch on there. The first one is that when muscles are contracting, they're the things that are supposed to move you. And I think one of the things we get caught up on is that when we cannot move well, we feel a sensation usually. And this sensation we describe as tightness. And that's your body stopping you from moving. But we also have to remember that your muscles respond to what the brain is telling them to do. So when we have muscles that are moving us really well, that's intentional. That was put there by the brain. The brain is saying, yep, we can use these muscles. Everything's good here. And when we have muscles that are feeling and creating a sensation of tightness and maybe stopping your mobility, meaning you can't move as far, you're not as flexible, that's also a very intentional thing that the body has set up. So it's interesting because all the things that your muscles are doing are controlled by the nervous system. And the cool thing about the nervous system is it doesn't make mistakes. So if it's moving you really well, then things are probably going really well. When it's not moving you very well and there's tightness there, there's probably a really good reason. So it is really important that we start kind of viewing this in a different way because our sensation of tightness, the thing we don't like, the thing that maybe is stopping us, not making us as flexible, although we want to get rid of it, it really is important that we investigate a little further because our sensation of what's going on and what's actually going on can be two very different things. The next thing I want to talk about is that in the gym industry, we think that the more relaxed our body is and our muscles are, the better off we'll be. I actually did an internship in college, and the big thing that they talked about is like, we got to get your body to be like Gumby. Mm. So like everything is just wiggly and nothing's supported. But think about the last time you actually felt like you had a joint in your body that was really unstable. Like you didn't trust it. Like you maybe it was your knee or your hip or your back and you're like you know i really can't do this motion because i don't trust that i'm going to be stable there i feel like it's going to give out or it's going to like lock out or something that's a really good example of muscles really 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 doing a poor job at contracting and so what we really don't want is the opposite of contraction which is relaxation everywhere or the Gumby scenario, right? We we actually want muscles doing their job. But what what we really want is muscles doing their job appropriately and not creating a negative sensation that accompanies it. So when we have tightness, as I just said, that's always a, an intentional thing the body has put there. But because it's uncomfortable, we like to get rid of it. But we can't get rid of it by relaxing it to c- and compromising the integrity or the strength or the uh, body's ability to protect itself, protect its joints. So the more that we are able to get muscles to be, I'm going to say balanced, meaning contract when they should contract and relax when they should be relaxing, the better our bodies will feel. Yeah, Julie, that's such a good point, this idea of kind of appropriate tension throughout the body. Because like you said, as much as we want our bodies to feel relaxed, we still want them to be able to function with appropriate tension. I don't know that we've ever had a client come in and say, it feels like my knee is going to give out going down the stairs. And it's like, finally, my knee feels so loose. Like nobody follows up the statement with like, yes, I've been waiting for this. Like my knee finally feels loose. It's like, no, my knee feels like it's about to give out. This is a really bad thing. And so when you kind of take the idea of your body being completely relaxed to that extreme, you realize maybe that's actually not the thing that you're going for. Now, you don't want to feel like your body is like super tense and you can't move at all. So we need to find that happy medium. We need that appropriate tension. And that often involves improving the way muscles function. You know, and Charlie, before we did this podcast, we were just brainstorming what we wanted to talk about. And you brought up a really good point. And you said the sensation of your body being relaxed and being able to be mobile and flexible is very different than your muscles being relaxed because your body being relaxed and being mobile and flexible and having the absence of that sensation we don't like called tightness is actually when muscles are doing their appropriate job. It's not when all the muscles are relaxed. It's when they're doing their appropriate job. Because remember, the muscles all being relaxed 
is kind of hinting towards the idea that muscles are relaxed, meaning they're not going to contract, meaning they're not going to do the job, meaning they're not going to be providing you stability, which again is also not a really great feeling. So we kind of mislabel the idea. Like when I'm feeling great, I'm feeling mobile, my body feels relaxed, it's not with tension or something, we think our muscles are relaxed. But actually our muscles are at that point doing their appropriate job. Now there's an analogy that we often use to try to get this point across, okay? So imagine you are at an art fair, all right? And you are an art connoisseur, you love paintings, you love artwork. And so you purchase this like $10 million painting, okay? Yes. Yeah, so it's this like really expensive, very unique painting. I'm not gonna throw out any painters' names because I don't, I don't know them well enough and it would probably be laughed by those who do. But here's the thing, you, you spent a huge sum of money on this painting, this really rare, very valuable painting, okay? And then you go to your house and you hang it up on your wall. And you hang it up and let's say you put three wires hanging up that painting, okay? Well, if one of the wires ends up not working so well and it snaps, what happens to the other two wires? Instead of holding up one third of the weight of the painting, now they're having to each hold up half the weight of the painting because there's only two wires that are working well. Well, if those wires are having to hold up more weight, do you think they have more tension or less tension going through them? In, in other words, are those wires now tighter or looser than they once were? And if they went from holding up a third of the weight to half the weight, well, now they're definitely tighter than they once were. Well, if we relate this to our body, when things feel tight, like Julie was saying, we often don't like that sensation. We try to get rid of that tightness. So in this scenario, if you were to try to get rid of the tightness of the wires and try to loosen up some of those wires, and you loosened up one of the two, and now there's only one wire that's holding the painting, do you think that wire is feeling way tighter or way looser than when you started? Well, it's way tighter because now it's having to hold up the entire weight of the painting instead of half the weight or a third of the weight. Well, what's the problem with this? The problem is if we just keep trying to release or relax the tight wires, what eventually happens to that painting? it comes crashing down in the $10 million that you spent on that painting, that painting got completely ruined. What's the way that we can make sure that the wires have less tension going through them, but the painting remains intact and still hung up on the wall? Well, we need to find those other wires, those original wires that weren't working so well and get those working better. So instead of one wire holding up the painting, we can have two wires or we can have three wires. And then all of a sudden, the painting stays on the wall, it's more stable, it's more secure, and there's equal tension going through those wires. Your muscles are kind of like those wires of the painting. Their job, in part, is to hold up your skeleton, to keep your skeleton vertical and hold your bones in place, okay? So when muscles start feeling tighter, that may be an indication that other muscles that are supposed to be helping to hold your bones in place, the, those muscles aren't working as well. And because they're not working as well, their buddies have to pick up more of the workload, pick up more of the slack. Well, when the muscles have to start picking up more of the workload, more of the slack and start to feel tighter, that can start to be uncomfortable. But the challenge is if we just focus on trying to address the tightness directly, it can be like just trying to loosen the wires that are holding up the $10 million painting. Eventually, you run out of wires to loosen, and that painting comes crashing down. As opposed to finding the wires, or in this case, the muscles that aren't working so well, get those muscles working better, and then the job of having to hold up your skeleton or hold your bones in place gets more evenly distributed as they have more appropriate tension going through them. I love that analogy because I feel like it really highlights the value of there being weight in each of those wires, like those wires are functioning, right? Because they're all going to be holding up the, the painting. But it also highlights how the way that each wire holds up the least amount of weight is when everything is working properly. So when we're talking about using and strengthening muscles and stimulating muscles to improve flexibility... What we're talking about is making sure all your wires are holding up all your paintings. 
And the way we can think about this is thinking about the muscles that are supposed to be moving and controlling your joints, which is the job of muscles, contract and they all cross joints so they move your joints or they stop your joints from moving. We just want to make sure that all these muscles are working because so often the thing that stops us from moving, the thing that prevents us from feeling quote unquote flexible is going to be a scenario like what Charlie just described with the painting. It's like I've got X amount of muscles, some are not working, so the others are really tight. But when we can reinstill function, or at least try to ask the body to function more, 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 improve the function of especially muscles that aren't working well, then the body starts to allow other muscles to be less tight because they're having to take over less of the workload. They're only having to take over their own workload. And what this allows is that the joint will allow you or you give the opportunity to move more through that joint because the more of the stress is distributed. And remember that stress is not a bad thing because the stress has to be there because our body all has weight. We're going to move our body around. It's just we don't want it to be excess stress on just a few muscles. We want the stress to be distributed amongst all the muscles. Well, that's a really good point because, you know, the question of, well, how does working muscles increase flexibility and won't that just make you tighter? I think your point really nailed the, our answer on the head there with the, with the idea being that, look, the job of muscles is to help your bones move or keep your bones from moving, okay? To have tension going through them, the job of muscles is to contract and the outcome then is to kind of move your joints and move your bones, and so the more efficiently that your muscles can contract, the better that your muscles can contract, the more efficiently and the better that your bones and joints can move. And not only that, but so often when we are feeling this tightness that we think is going to happen, that is tends to be at least contributed by muscles not contracting well and other muscles having to compensate and make up for the lack of muscle involvement by having to do too much. And so if we can just get all the muscles working as they're supposed to work, that can really keep not only the, the sensations of tightness down, but it can also help to make sure that the bones and joints stay moving well. So there's a couple ways you can approach doing this. You're like, cool, Ju Julie and Charlie, I like the idea. How am I going to do this? So definitely find a local MAT specialist because they're going to be really trained at searching for these muscles that are inactive. So if you're confused on what MAT is, we do have a previous podcast called What is MAT? And also every month we do a podcast on MAT. It might not be explaining what MAT is, but we do talk about it quite a bit. So definitely check out muscle activation techniques and go to muscleactivation.com to find a local specialist close to you. Another thing you can do, and this is kind of the maintenance that we always give our clients, is you can be doing resistance training. And when we talk about resistance training, we're talking about it in the way that we think of it, which we fully dive into in one of our podcasts called Foundational Exercise, which is moving slowly. We go into all these details, but moving slowly, moving with control, moving in full range of motion, making sure you're thinking about the muscle. So you want to be training in this certain way. And if you're training in this certain way, that is definitely the maintenance piece of it. So if you feel like when you do that, you're still getting the reaction or the post-workout piece of extra tightness, you're like, yeah, but it doesn't work on me. That means you probably need to get a little more involved, a little more specific and find a local MAT specialist so they can resolve that issue. And then you can go back to doing your maintenance of foundational exercise. So definitely try those two things out. I have yet to meet someone that is experiencing a uh, lack of flexibility and they start doing either one of those and it doesn't really, really drastically help them. So try it out. And see what you think. Let us know. Yeah, and that resistance training piece is a really big thing. Now, when you're doing resistance training, yes, go back and check out our previous episodes. But for some quick bullet points of how you should be going about doing this, okay? First and foremost, we want to make sure 
that you are moving slowly while you're doing the resistance training, okay? This will decrease your risk of injury, all right? So that's thought number one. Thought number two, when you're doing resistance training, okay, is to focus on squeezing muscles. So often when people do resistance training, they're thinking that they are there to move weight, all right? They're there to do weightlifting, all right? And while weightlifting can be a form of resistance training, at the end of the day, when you're specifically there to challenge muscles, when you're specifically there to improve the function of muscles, that's where you have to be putting your focus is on squeezing the muscles that you're trying to challenge, squeezing the muscles that you are trying to improve. So number one, move slowly. Number two, is focus on squeezing muscles, not moving weight. And point number three is to make sure that you're challenging your muscles at a variety of lengths, okay? And this can be done in one single exercise where, where you're moving what we might consider to be like a full-ish range of motion, all right? At least from a joint motion perspective. But more than likely, you're gonna have to use a bunch of different exercises to challenge your muscles at a bunch of different lengths from a really long position to a mid-range position to a very shortened position. And in fact, sitting here, I really can't think of a single exercise that fully challenges a muscle from its extreme length and to its extreme short and inappropriate manner. So more than likely, you're going to be using multiple exercises to challenge the same muscles, but at different lengths. But the, the goal is to be able to not only challenge them at different lengths, but challenge in a variety of joint positions as well. Yeah, and the thing that I think doesn't support what we're bringing up is when we say resistance training or weight training, whatever you see in the gym right now is not the thing that's going to promote this flexibility mobility thing we're talking about. Because the way that people exercise in the gym, well, most people, is they move fairly quickly. They're focused on getting the weights up and down, and they're not focused on their muscles. And the side effect of this or the the negative side of this is that it becomes very externally based and remember when we're at the gym or when we're when you're trying to stimulate muscles to improve your body's function you have to be thinking internally and you have to be structuring your exercise to stimulate internally because your bicep doesn't care if you did 20 million bicep curls it cares if it got stimulated and it cares how long it got stimulated and the lengths it got stimulated in. So when you take your focus from thinking I've got to do 10 bicep curls because Julian Charlie said to you know work all my muscles and joints, when you take it from thinking I got to get 10 done to okay let me squeeze my bicep, let me move slowly, let me see how full of a range I can get, the higher the chance that your body is going to receive that in a very positive way and s- receive it as a more appropriate stimulus rather than an inappropriate stimulus, which can often happen when you're not focused on the internals, when you're not focused on the muscle. And when you apply an inappropriate stimulus, which is what often happens when you're not focused internally, you're thinking, move the weight, move quickly, get it done, then that can really encourage more lack of flexibility or more tightness. So be really mindful about that when you are weight training because there is a certain way to do it that more promotes mobility and flexibility and there is also a way to do it that has a higher chance or a higher risk of promoting you losing more flexibility and feeling more sensations of tightness after you work out and then going back to the first suggestion that julie made and we really cannot recommend this enough is it go find a certified mat specialist okay like julie said if you go to muscleactivation.com you click on the find a specialist tab you'll see a whole list of people in your area that are certified so connect with one of them and go get yourself assessed and go get yourself a session because the whole goal of MAT is to assess people's bodies to figure out where muscles are not contracting well and then address those muscles that aren't contracting well to get them back on board. And just like we were talking about with the painting analogy, this is like getting more wires holding up that painting. All right. So less tension is going through the wires that are working well and the painting itself is more secured and stable. Less tension is going through your muscles overall and your bones and joints are more secured and more stable. And then to the earlier points that we brought up, 
when more muscles are working well and able to do their job, that means that your joints are going to be able to move better. That means your bones are going to be able to move better. That means the flexibility that you are looking for becomes more attainable and attainable in an appropriate manner where it's not compromising your structure, where it's not compromising the passive tissues of your joints. But it's attainable in a manner where you're going to have strength with it, where you're going to feel less tension overall throughout your body, and in a manner where your joints are going to be stable and less likely to be injured because they have the support of the muscular system surrounding them, okay? So this is a really, really, really big thing. If you've never experienced MAT before, you have to find somebody to get this done. Yes, we've done a bunch of different episodes about what is MAT and explaining a bunch of different concepts of MAT. So please check those out. Send any questions you have to us about it. We have a lot of information on our site as well, matschaumberg.com, and definitely check out muscleactivation.com for a lot of content about MAT as well. So we need you walking away with this concept. Flexibility is not when your entire muscle system is relaxed. That's actually not a great thing for your joints and muscles and bones. What we actually feel as flexible is when muscles are doing their job appropriately. So the more that we can ask the body and stimulate the body to get muscles to work appropriately, the more flexible and the more mobile and the more relaxed your body will feel. So thanks so much for tuning in. I do want to tell you about a new event coming to Schaumburg, Illinois. You have one month left to get your early bird tickets schaumburg health summit is coming to the fairfield inn and suites in schaumburg illinois on may 18th 2019 we have put together a rock star list of speakers that are going to be speaking in depth about something that they work with each and every day we're going to be combining holistic practitioners medical doctors nutritionists people talking about fitness people talking about mental health you are not going to want to miss this event so make sure you go to www.schomburghealthsummit.com and get your early bird tickets before march 31st and while you're online head on over to itunes and leave us a rating and review this is so helpful for us because it allows other people to find our content easier. If you found that this information was helpful or interesting or provided a different perspective than what you've heard before, leave us that rating and review so other people can be exposed to it as well. It does wonders for us getting our message out there. Who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is maybe confused about why we so strongly suggest focusing on muscle contraction to improve flexibility as opposed to muscle relaxation to improve flexibility? Send this episode to them so they can hear our thoughts, and our perspective on the topic. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week. We'll talk with you all next week.